What does only in name only eliminate? Does it mean that phenomena are only names? Names are sounds. Does it mean that phenomena are only sounds? This cup is only a sound. You got another ad. <laughs> Does it mean that this cup is only a sound? That's very cleverly done. When the person picks it up, if they're being videoed. See, I've got it on my side too. <laughs> You've got the, the uh, advertising, advertising down, the fundraising down. I sure don't. I can only hold up books, which is just too, too obvious, you know. You can just get the, the speaker to inadvertently take a drink. Mine, uh, just too obvious. Our, you know, is a tall building just a sound? And you know, when you look into highest yoga tantra, mm, 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 mm. maybe we could find something that says that. But that's another another area. If nothing is established in the least from the side of the basis of imputation, it's a very good question, isn't it? It's in, in dependence upon the basis of imputation that something is imputed. If you don't have the proper basis of imputation, uh, it's not valid to impute it. You can't just impute whatever you want to, you know, plastic gold. You can't impute gold to it. I mean, you can. You can try to, it won't work. It doesn't function. But people try to, and they work up fakes. And politicians and so forth, and gurus, and you know, work up how to be fakes put on a show, get people to call them rishis, mm. and so forth. If nothing is established in the least from the side of the basis, you know, from the side, the Questioner is very careful from the side of the basis of imputation. The aggregates and so forth. So then the topic is I, person. So we're going to designate, impute, I, in dependence upon the basis of imputation. Then, since we can say anything about anything, we can speak about 
even the horns of a rabbit, we, I, we just said them, I just said them, horns of a rabbit. I saw the horns of a rabbit this morning. How could these words posit them as existing? The horns of a rabbit are assuredly, you see the Tibetan leaves out, as we often do in conversation, what the antecedent is. And to prevent people from getting lost, I want to put in what the antecedent is. The antecedent here, I think, is clearly the horns of the horns of a rabbit, because you know, it, the rest, the part that's left there in Tibetan is are, assur are uh, assuredly non-existent. In fact, the horns of a rabbit. It's not saying everything. So. It's a good qualm. You all have it. What the hell is this? You're saying only names. Only names are left. I did leave, leave out the word over. Eventually. So, it's all right, but left. Only names, only names. <laughs> this is, I mean, the question is, what does only names mean, right? Only names are left in place of the negated, that this was my horrible error before, but anyway, I put, I didn't mistake what it went with, but there's no way you could read it and imagine where negated went with. What it went with, which are negated was what it was, which was put at the end somewhere. The negated establishment, you see, what is negated? Establishment from the side of the basis of, of imputation the negated establishment from the side of imputation. Only names. Every time I read it, I'm drawn into speculation. You know, the translation has to be good enough so that, so that the speculation that's drawn into the the what's provoked is not is not at the fault of the translation. And I what I'm drawn into here is I don't think anything I don't think there's a problem with the translation. In aspects of helper and helped Holiness often says this, harmer and harmed, and so forth, undeniably dawn also to ordinary worldly beings. Why does he say ordinary worldly beings? Dawn also Yes. Well, only names are left in place that and aspects dawn also to ordinary worldly beings in only the appearance factor of a conceptual consciousness that arises subsequent to this negation. Do you follow? So, these ordinary worldly beings, you know, it's their appearance factor 
of a conceptual consciousness that arises subsequent to this negation. So it's the ordinary worldly beings that have this, that are, that have gone through this process of, of meditative reasoning and have gone into meditative equipoise and they're rising in the state called subsequent attainment, subsequent to the meditative equipoise. Now, we know, although Uh, someone sent in a an email with a question that assumed that the topic was about um, how one emerged from direct perception of emptiness. No. The topic here is um, prior to direct perception of emptiness. So that's what the topic is. And it's framed in that context. It did, that question was particularly, that email was particularly helpful to me because eventually it promoted the question of whether any of this discussion applied to post direct perception of emptiness whether any of it did okay when the sentence says also to ordinary beings also to me implies it can apply to Aryans as well it's for both people who have had influence and people who have direct perception. But then what are you going to do with the that arises subsequent to this negation? Well, they both negated it. Whether you have an inference or a direct perception, you negated it in our existence. I follow. I follow what you're saying. Okay. I don't know as I agree with you, but I was first reacting to your suggestion as impossible, and I now take it as a possible reading. <laughs> <laughs> and since the performance of the function of those various objects in the manner of only the, not the only the, of only the conventions of only. Now I've got to check and make sure that there are two onlys, but this came when I was just printing it. And I'm quite sure there are two onlys. Of only the conventions, of only those appearances, do not incur, incur damage by other conventional valid cognitions. Now, the reason why there's a comma after other means that the earlier consciousness it doesn't, if you said other conventional without a comma, it would mean that the earlier consciousness was a valid cognition, conventional valid cognition. This just means this is something other. It's another cognition, but it's a valid cognition. So in other words, when you 
see a gar gar garden hose, I was about to say garden hose, a garden hose as a snake. When you get closer or put a flashlight on it or put your, or whatever, there's a subsequent cognition there that you, you you see or by handling it or physical body cognition you understand properly that the earlier cognition was wrong that's a I want to get the right word the, the, thereby the earlier cognition was damaged by some other cognition. The some other cognition is a valid cognition. All right. This is doing, this is a, with the function of those various objects. In other words, the politician has made, shall we, in this instance, use the male, has made him out to be somebody who knows the best people and can appoint, therefore, the best cabinet secretaries, the best ministers. And then they get fired one by one, the cabinet almost entirely gets cleaned out and and so the this fact that was accepted as valid gets shown to be by the actions of that prime minister or president or whoever to be entirely wrong right or we ourselves can determine that these folks that were appointed were incapable of doing their jobs and we conclude that their appointments and these people as far as their qualifications were concerned weren't up to it. They were incapable. This is a very common occurrences. You ask somebody at Shravasti to cook a meal and they burn the hell out of the pots. And even somebody said, oh, this person surely can learn to do it quickly and you give him six, give him or her six months and that person is still burning the hell out of the pots and you with a sorry face have to approach the person and say i think we have to assign you to another position <laughs> <laughs> that kind of thing happens <laughs> I hope you didn't just reassign someone. <laughs> <laughs> Although maybe you assign, you decide, the others decide that the boss, oh, we thought you really knew how to assign people, <laughs> right? Oh, we really thought, you know, and blah, blah, blah. That's happening all the time. These are very... Right. And then and then people say, well, uh, you never know who's right. <laughs> or, <laughs> right? And then you get entirely wishy-washy, <laughs> you know. How many rockets can you destroy sending, <laughs> sending rockets up to Mars? You keep 
I just finished watching a series about sending rockets to Mars. That's what's on my mind. Ah. They are posited as true relative to the mental perspective of the world. Oh, then what does world mean? You see, does it mean the dumbass, you know, the unverifiable positions of the world or, or the verifiable positions of the world. And Jaya Sheba has a fantastic uh, rendering of the various meanings of world, world meaning worldly beings, and worldly beings, worldly perspectives. That world uh, in some instances means uh, um, valid cognitions, a level of valid cognition, not ultimate valid cognition, but a lower level of valid cognition. But not always. Sometimes it means foolish, you know, foolish people who believe that a creator God uh, created the world. At this rate, we're only going to get through a paragraph. However, even through only, how, how many the only thus are in? <laughs> only the names. The, you know, one would say this must be really deep. The, the only the. <laughs> <laughs> Only the names get rid of the first the. Even though only the names, wow, of the, see, it used to be the mere names, which had to be changed to only the names. We couldn't, it couldn't be the only names. Only the names. And I tried to go through it and, <laughs> and you could say, oh, I thought Jeffrey had an eagle eye. And now I know he doesn't. Only the names of the horns of a rabbit or of a permanent self and so forth are created Deity, you know, this is a big topic in India. Big topic for Buddhists are spoken. The appearances of them rely on superficial causes of mistake. So it's not mere perspective. At in college. Um, Clyde Cluckon, the famous anthropologist whose course I took along with probably 300 others or two or 300 others. Uh, anyway, Clyde Cluckon and the material we were reading uh, taught us that Eskimo husbands, when you visited, would give, you know, if I visited, I would have been given his wife for the night. Uh, and it was all up to custom. So customs are fluid. And we are forced by our customs into perspectives so it's all customs, it's all relative, and this really got 
through to me. And the question is, how far does it get through? How far should it get through? And that's a big question. Relative to, you know, compassion. I mean, okay. It speaks for itself. And their performance of functions in accordance with their appearance is damaged by other what kind of other conventional valid cognitions so valid cognition is a tremendous topic and a lot of what was inherited in tibet as validly cognized, validly approved, validly established, flat earth, that only, and, and another one, that only one person could use, you know, nobody else could use my heart, came into a question. So it was during that period um, this had to be faced and that the our earth was flat. It didn't mean it wasn't bumpy, right? It meant that <laughs> it was flat but bumpy. <laughs> but, but, it was flat, you know, that kind of flat. And <laughs> uh, one of my one of my great teachers wrote a treatise after he had flown on a on a plane from India to Germany, which actually isn't that far. Uh, wrote that treatise. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, things look that way. They look, you know, they our world looks flat. And, yeah, do you have to circle the earth in many directions to find out its, its uh, sphere? Well, isn't that, is that Galileo? Galileo figured that out. Yeah. So that was accepted as validly established, established by valid cognition. So this was the inherited position. So that's given up slowly, slowly. And their performance of function is damaged by them, due to which they differ from the former. What is they differ from the former? I've distracted myself enough that I don't know what they means anymore. Can you tell me? The na only names of things like horns of the rabbit versus only names of conventionally valid validly established conventions. Thank you. Whew. Don't have to go back and I can... I, if we can take a commercial break. <laughs> Consequently, only names are left. Also, is not taken as the existence of only the respective terms. And I put in brackets, da, da, the basic meaning of da is sounds. But these are expressive sounds. So expressive sounds are terms. They say they, they have a content. 
they have an intended content, I would add, intended content. So when the wind blows and the leaves and the leaves and branches, you know, the leaves uh, make noise, that's not intended content. Although we can draw some conclusion from that, right? Oh, the wind's blowing, <laughs> for instance, right? Um, so, and the rustling of the, is it leaves or branches, branches and leaves, or is it just leaves in the heaven? Is it the heaven of the 33? That's what came to my mind. Um, is, uh, yeah, I think it's the heaven of 33, but I forget. I'm not, f you know, that's what rang in my mind in Tibetan. Um, Anyway, when when uh, a Buddha, anyway, does the rustling, not the wind, that's intended, you see, to give the message of impermanence. So if I if I didn't have the example correctly from the text, my example is still good. If a, when a Buddha rustles the branches and leaves to give the message of impermanence, then that's those, you know, that, that rustling is an, uh, an expressive sound. Not just, uh, that's not a non-expressive sound. Okay, but here, expressive sound, respective term. So it's not just sounds. You you don't plant a, a corn seed to get sounds. You don't cook a meal to get sounds. You don't cook a meal to get a different tune. High Shoga Tantra, everything is a manifestation of the extremely subtle wind appearing in form. That form, I think, well not I think, is not just sound. We think this out a little bit. Sounds are included, but shapes, shape of the body of Manjushri in all sorts of forms. Must be odors too. Any, everything. But what about there must be places where it's sound. Everything comes from sound. Hmm. But anyway, that's not what's being talked about here. That's not the situation. Taken as the existence of only the respective terms of those, sounds of those, but th that's the hinge. That terms means is terms are sounds. That's the hideous joke of these. That's a joke. Rather, 
a presentation of object, agent, and so forth, must feasibly be possible in the context of being only imputed there. Very interesting use. Later, the term here, here and there, here comes up later. I pondered over the term and I didn't just use here because uh, there is par. The counterpart is tsur. So I put in the Tibetan and I, I don't, I forget what I put in. But I couldn't put in just uh, here because in Tibetan here uh, is usually translated by deer. So to make it clear, it wasn't just deer. Uh, I used something else. Wow. One paragraph and a bit of the next, the lead-in to the next paragraph. Tsongkhapa's great commentary, Narajuna's fundamental treatise on the middle, called Wisdom. <clears throat> 